What would you give for fame, for money, to be remembered forever? Would you sell your soul? According to music legend, that's exactly what some artists did. They paid the ultimate price in exchange for skills unrivaled. Where did this myth of selling one's soul to the devil begin? And if you wanted to do the same, how exactly would you go about it? Hi, I'm Shelley from Happy Mag, and today we're proud to present the one true guide that every fame-hungry musician needs, how to survive a deal with the devil. The notion of selling one's soul is entwined in rock and roll history. Hell, Bob Dylan even admitted to it once. Why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. I mean, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago, and I'm holding up my hand. What was your bargain? To get where um, I am now. Sh should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander. On this earth? <laughs> and on this earth and, in, uh, and then in a world we can't see. It hardly stops at Dylan though. There's Robert Johnson, Jimmy Page, Ozzy Osbourne, Niccolo Paganini, even Eminem and Kanye West are among the many accused. If you want to make the unholy deal yourself, you have to look at the whole picture. What did Dylan do right? Where did Robert Johnson go wrong? We're here to help anyone who's ready to face damnation for fame and fortune. So here's what we've learned. Before any of these artists shook hands with the Horned One, the legend has its roots in an age-old German folk tale. The story of Foss tells of a scholar dissatisfied with his life who seeks magical knowledge from the demon Mephistopheles. Only when you deepen your sources beyond the church or Faustian tales, for instance, the Malleus Maleficarum treatise on witchcraft in 1487, you'll find the first evidence of a correct way to trade with Satan and his minions. With the right attitude and a quick look at the lunar calendar, apparently it can be done. Regardless, there are always two endings to the deal story. Most of the time, it's the misanthrope who's unable to regain his soul and spends eternity in damnation. But then there's the fiddler from Georgia who outwits the fiend, beating the devil at his own game and keeping the prize while remaining free from hell's clutches. We don't want you to fall into the fiery underworld, so let's start with a definitive example of what not to do. Meet Robert Johnson. No matter who you ask, you can't mention Johnson without claiming the devil tuned his guitar on a crossroads in Mississippi. At age 27, Johnson would lose his life. Some say he was poisoned by a woman he flirted with, some say that woman's husband was the one who killed him. Johnson's mistake was clear. He handed over his guitar to be tuned, hungry for fame yet unaware of the oncoming curse. So rule number one, don't let the devil touch your shit. Now, the next mistake that many artists made was equally unwise. They squandered the gift. Niccolo Paganini was born in 1782, the most celebrated violinist of his time. But when he grew frail, he stopped playing and the devil swung his scythe. Don't let the devil touch your shit, don't squander the gift, and what else? This one's a little tricksy. Don't keep the deal to yourself. The devil may say to keep it a secret, but that's not really what he wants at all. He wants you to sing his name from your perch like Dylan did to that interviewer. So we've covered what not to do, but how about what you need to do right? Let's jump towards a few legends who are still kicking despite the devil's best efforts. Jimmy Page, Bob Dylan and Ozzy Osbourne have all been accused of satanic worship and alleged deals. But why have they been spared? According to tales such as The Devil Went Down to Georgia, Tenacious D's Tribute or other Faustian legends, the only way to win the devil's favour without submitting your soul is to beat him in a game of skill. And really it's not that hard to imagine Jimmy Page out shredding the devil. So if the devil appears to you with promises, play a game you can win. If you're Ozzy Osbourne, you challenge the devil to a drinking game, understand? The next rule may be the most important of all. The deal is for life. The devil is a dirty player, and even if you've beaten him once, he's sure to come knocking again. Bob Dylan has released 38 studio albums in his lifetime, enough to satiate the chief commander's appetite. Don't forget the deal, because Satan sure won't. Now the last rule is rather simple. As we scoured rock and roll history finding artists who had made the deal, we found something pretty surprising. They were all men. What about Stevie Nicks, Joan Jett, or Nina Simone? Does the devil only trade in male souls? We doubt it. Our conclusion is that every woman who made the deal held up their end of the bargain with flying colours. Maybe we should have listened to those witches from 1487. So there you have it, the secret to surviving a deal with the devil. Don't let him touch your shit, 
Don't squander the gift. Don't keep it a secret. Play a game you can win. Play for life and preferably be a woman. If you follow these rules, you'll stay one step ahead of Beezlebub. But be warned, the moment your curtain closes, it may be that you face a fiery pit and realize the demon has won after all. But for fame, fortune, and a lifetime on top of the model earth, wasn't it worth it?